Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sergeant Alfred Lopez. I'm a combat correspondent with 1st Marine Division Public Affairs. Today we have the Commanding General of 1st Marine Division, Major General Ronald Bailey, here to talk to us about Exercise Steel Night. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right, sir. Basically, we're here to try and give the audience a better understanding of exactly what's going on with Exercise Steel Night and what it is, sir. Um, it's described as the, the return of the Marine Corps to its core competencies. Can you describe to us what those are, what our core competencies are, and how we've diverted from them for the past 10 years, sir? Well, let me uh, take you back uh, to state that uh, this year's Steel Night's a division-level exercise. And it will give us an opportunity as a division to focus in on our division uh, command and control. When you start talking the core competencies of a division, we're talking offense, defensive operations, most importantly, amphibious operations. So for us, when we talk about uh, the transition back uh, after being involved in uh, OIF and OEF, that's the transition that we're talking about. Uh, to include such things as humanitarian disaster relief, uh, things of that nature. But uh, Steel Knight uh, started off as a a armor exercise in the 90s and then evolved into a pre-deployment training exercise as our units were preparing to go into uh, OEF. And so uh, since that is on the drawdown, now we are focusing on division, division level uh, skills. All right, sir. When you entered the Marine Corps, sir, what was a large scale training exercise like? And like you mentioned, it's changed a lot because of uh, OIF and OEF. Mm -hmm. Can you describe how that's changed? Yes, the, uh, the large scale, what I would call or describe as a large scale exercise, was uh, the uh, combined arms exercise, better known as CACS. And so uh, we would all deploy, at least a battalion uh, would deploy uh, 229 Palms with the regimental headquarters as the command element. Uh, so having that regimental uh, uh, headquarters as command element, we had uh, uh, representatives or, or the squadron, uh, the uh, MLG representative uh, in terms of uh, the battalion, uh, similar to what we have today in our combat logistics uh, battalion. So uh, that regimental headquarters uh, was responsible for integrating the MAGTAF and pulling the MAGTAF together. So the regimental headquarters was the MAGTAF uh, headquarters with uh, battalions. Uh, that exercise in, uh, in total uh, was a, gave us an opportunity to work on our combined arms, our combined arms skills. So that's uh, the difference. But uh, what we're doing today as we look at the uh, exercise steel night is the beginning or kind of the forerunner uh, to our ITX, our integrated uh, training exercises. So, uh, but we're, we're doing it from a division level perspective uh, uh, during this uh, steel night. Um, obviously, the Marine Corps is a unique fighting force, as you know, sir. How are we uniquely equipped to address the future security needs of America, especially with regards to uh, our interests in the Pacific, sir? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. Uh, I'll start by saying the, uh, the United States is a global uh, maritime power. Uh, we're, we're the largest economy in the world. Uh, we, uh, when, you, when you think about it from a broad perspective, a, a big picture scope, uh, 21 of the 28 mega cities are no, near the littorials, basically about 62 miles away from the littorials. Large population centers are near the littorials. And so when you are a, a nation uh, that survives off the global commons, then you need a force like the United States Marine Corps, which is a force that has a naval character. You know, we're a naval force and we're able to respond today with today's force. So this is where uh, training like uh, Steel Knight uh, at the division level is very, very important because as the ground combat element of a MEF uh, could very well be deployed uh, to uh, conduct operations uh, that uh, may secure uh, those littorials. So the Marine Corps is, in, in my perspective, is uh, uniquely uh, organized and qualified uh, to fill those uh, future roles partnership capacity and, and partnership building these are the things that the marine corps stabilizing force we we work uh, very well with joint uh, we we create space uh, for the nation and for commanders in an environment sure. regimental landing team one is going to be basically heading the landing onto the beach for uh, exercise steel night mm -hmm. could you describe the challenges of controlling an amphibious landing team as well as how chaotic is it to establish an actual landing force operations center well, for RLT-1? 
One of the difficult things uh, about an amphibious operation is the coordination, and so that's why steel night is uh, very important. Uh, I, if, if, I had, uh, if I had a request to sign it, it would be to have more amphibious ships. Uh, we don't have enough amph amphibious ships uh, to be able to rehearse and train properly. Uh, but if I did, if I was king for a day, I would give that entire regimental landing team uh, the capacity or the opportunity to, to come ashore from uh, our amphibious ships. And so that's in how you organize, how you prepare. Uh, so for Steel Night, this will give us an opportunity to train to that. But the most important thing, uh, as I said, in, in an amphibious operation is the command and control. Uh, having a good command and control allows you uh, to be able to make those changes that are required or uh, move a force here or there to respond. It gives you that adaptability that you need on an amphibious operation. Uh, RLT-1 uh, has been and is a part of uh, first uh, MEB. So this gives them an opportunity to train to their core competence and enhance their overall skills in amphibious operations uh, from everything uh, to uh, the command and control, uh, the uh, ground combat element, uh, the logistics aspect of it, and the aviation aspect of it. All those are critical parts of an amphibious operation. And, and so creating uh, that, that uh, lodgment requires uh, that they train to those skill sets. Sir, this year's exercise is currently it is going to be in conjunction with uh, Exercise Valiant Mark as well, where the Singaporeans are with uh, 2nd Battalion, 5th Marines. Yes. They're training right now. How are you planning to uh, integrate the Singaporeans into uh, Exercise Steel Night, and why is that important for us? Well, as I mentioned to you earlier when I was talking about the, uh, the U.S. and its it being a global uh, maritime nation, part of what we do as a Marine Corps is that we work with our partners. We build that capacity. Uh, a unique strength of the United States Marine Corps when we are, you know, we're organized as a Marine Air Ground Task Force, as a MAGTAF, is that we have the ability uh, to move from, from ship to shore. Uh, by moving from ship to shore, it, uh, it gives us an opportunity to, we, we create, we have a very light footprint. And so as we're building uh, the, the partnership with our host nations, uh, sharing with them our skill set, they share with us theirs also, we're able to uh, establish a relationship that we may need or may uh, in the future uh, be a, a force uh, that's working together, for example, on humanitarian disaster relief. Uh, Tomodachi come to, to mind when you start talking uh, uh, the, the last HADR type of operation, humanitarian disaster relief type of operation. So when we have the opportunity in an exercise such as uh, Valiant Mark to work with the Singaporeans, that gives us a great opportunity to one, share with them our, uh, our command and control, our systems and how we do things, uh, share with them our lessons learned. We have a, a force of Marines who are combat trained, so we can share those lessons with them and, 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 and talk to them and, and show them how we do different things. And then we learn the same from them uh, as we watch how they, they work through different skill sets and challenges uh, that we have in front of us. Valiant Mark is a very, very good exercise. It's just one of many. Uh, that we're involved in, in terms of the partners all over the uh, Asian Pacific region. That's right. Um, large scale live fire exercises were the, the staple of the Marine Corps during the 1990s, sir. Uh, what do you think are the biggest benefits of a large scale exercise like Steel Night? Well, let me go back and kind of modify that just a little bit. Um, we, uh, as I said before, we had regimental headquarters that would go out. Uh, First Division had, in fact, uh, gone out on large-scale exercise, and even when I was in Second Division, we did some of the same things. And so over the last 12 years, we have not had that opportunity because of the counterinsurgency fight, the coin fight. Uh, the great value and benefit of, of an exercise of this nature is you get out and you're able to exercise your command and control, and then you're able to uh, more or less uh, stretch your systems, test your systems to make sure that uh, that you can talk to your units. For example, I have 1st Marines here at Camp Pendleton. I have 5th Marines over at 29 Palms. So, you know, that, that's a pretty broad area uh, in which the, the division is spread. But uh, most importantly, it gives us an opportunity to, to work all of our systems, uh, to work our HF, our VHF, our SATCOMs, uh, use data links and uh, CPOF, all those things that we need to control a fight or to uh, 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 
or to look at things across a range of military operations in any theater. That's right. Exercise Steel Night this year is generating a lot of media interest or more than the previous years. Is there a specific message you want to deliver to the public well, yes. during Steel Night? Yeah, the message that I want to deliver to the public is that the United States Marine Corps stands ready. Uh, when the nation is least ready, the United States Marine Corps will be ready. That's the first uh, uh, thing I would like to pass off to the American uh, public. Then the uh, other thing that I would like to say is that uh, we're training uh, now for contingencies or whatever may confront this nation in the future. And so the Marines and sailors that are involved in Steel Night uh, take a lot of pride in uh, doing that and, and training to those core competencies as I talked uh, mentioned earlier. So uh, what I would say is that the United States Marine Corps stands ready uh, to uh, meet the challenges of the future and will be ready when the nation's least ready. That's fair. Just switch my questions. Sir, when you think about the future of the Marine Corps, as we move forward in the 21st century, uh, what topics are most on your mind? As I uh, think about the future, uh, the number one thing that comes to mind is amphibious operations. I need ships to train with. That's the first thing that comes to mind. My units need ships to train with. So those are the type of things that I'm thinking about. But uh, when I think about the Asian Pacific Theater, what I, I think about is uh, partner capacity. I think about training with our, our partners and our allies in that region uh, so that when something happens, it won't be the first time that we're seeing each other. It's not the first time when we're talking about the Marine Corps planning process or it's not the first time when they'll see uh, my Marines and sailors. And so when you have that type of relationship, it makes uh, for moving into a, a very difficult situation, a very challenging situation like an HADR or an offensive uh, type operation, it makes it a lot better when you have had an opportunity to train together such as Valiant, uh, Mark, and you have seen each other's SOPs, the standard operating procedures. So that's, that's the thing that I think about uh, when I start thinking about the future and where we're going in terms of the Asian Pacific uh, theater. There are a lot of challenges out there, and I think as a Marine Corps, we need to be ready to respond to all those challenges. Like you mentioned, sir, uh Exercise Steel Night has a lot of moving parts. Obviously, we're here in Camp Pendleton, then we're, we're with the uh, 5th Marines over at uh, mm -hmm. 29 Palms. What parts of the exercise are you most looking forward to seeing? Well, uh, for me, getting down and talking to the Marines, the, the Lance Corporals and PSCs, uh, because they're extremely very talented, and they, they, are, they know their job, and they take a lot of pride in showing you and demonstrating to you that they know your job. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting out uh, with our battalions. Uh, I'm also uh, extremely pleased and uh, I, I offer my best to uh, CLR-1 with a large number of, of assets that they put out in the field. So uh, while we are looking at this as a division level exercise, uh, the elements of uh, MLG, uh, third M uh, first MLG, uh, CLR-1 that's providing the support that we need really tremendous support. I mean, thousands and thousands, roughly about 2,000 uh, Marines and sailors uh, from the Combat Logistic Regiment 1. Yes, sir. You, you talked a little bit about the, uh, the junior Marines and wanting to see them and how talented they are. During counterinsurgency operations, sir, those junior Marines were instrumental in delivering the commander's intent mm -hmm. all the way down to the lowest level. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate any change as far as the roles of those junior Marines when, when it comes to amphibious landing operations? Well, I, I will say that uh, when we start talking about the uh, Lance Corporals and the Corporals and the PSCs and those Marines uh, and their role in uh, counterinsurgency operations, more from a distributive oper uh, operations perspective, it was that type of uh, uh, strategic corporal, very smart, sharp. Uh, Marine that carry the day. They will continue to carry the day because it's leadership at the lowest levels uh, that accomplish the mission. And so when they understand the intent of any operation, it, uh, it helps everyone. So I'm very proud of uh, those Marines because one, they're very talented, they know their trade, and they take the initiative, and they have never failed to accomplish a mission. So they add to the legacy of our Corps uh, through their professionalism and hard work and dedication. All right, sir. Is there anything else about Exercise Steel Night 
or Valiant Mark that you'd like to talk about, sir? Uh, well, I'm uh, very pleased uh, with what has happened thus far. And uh, my uh, bravo Zulu to my staff and to all the commanders and the Marines and sailors for making this a very successful operation. Thank you for your time, sir. That concludes our interview with 1st Marine Division's Commanding General, Major General Ronald Bailey, and our conversation with him about exercise Steel Night.